So to dimension our workbench, um, we simply go up to the dimensions menu and we're going to click on the parallel dimension. So we'll dimension this top line first. So I'm going to click in the top left hand corner and then the top right hand corner and then just click above somewhere. Now if I click on the select tool it escapes out of the dimensioning tool. Now you see that when I zoom out that dimension text is way too small to be seen. So I'm going to, if I zoom into it you can see it says 1200 millimeters which is which is right um, but it's just, the text is just way too small to be seen. So I'm going to show you how to set up a new dimension style. So if we click on format up here and then click on style manager palette it opens up the style manager. If we scroll down until we see dimension styles, click the little expand button. Now, standard is what it's set to at the moment, which is um, the style where the text is really small. So let's just create our own style. So we'll call it 1 to 10 dimensions of dims and hit OK. Now our units. Um, You'll see on this dimension here that we've got 1200.00 millimeters. Now we don't need those zeros after the decimal point because all the, the dimensions on this project are round numbers. So I'm just going to change where it says precision, precision for primary units. I'm going to change that to zero. I'm also going to untick append units because we don't really need the millimeters showing up here because we know everything in this drawing is in millimeters. So I'll minimize units, I'm going to expand the formats heading and I'm going to scroll down until I see dimension size scale. I'm going to change that to 10. Now I'll explain that once we get into the paper space side of things but for now we'll just change it to 10. Um, and the text, so the text is very, um, very small there but we actually want to change that to be around two and a half millimeters. Um, now you'll notice that you can't actually type in the size you want into this drop down box. Um, I don't know whether that's a bug or what, what sort of prevents us from doing that but if we click around we can get back into it and we'll just select about 2.47 mil. Um, ideally you want about 2.5, I'm not sure why it seems to be, I don't know whether that's um, just converted over from Imperial or something like that, but that's the only options we have. So we'll close this down. Um, we'll delete this dimension and we'll redraw that one. So I'll go up to Dimensions, click Parallel, but before we draw it, we're going to click Modify and open the Properties box. So now you can see here we've got an option to change the dimension style. So we click on 1 to 10 dims, which is the one we just created. And you can see it by default, it sticks all your dimensions on the dimension layer. Um, the rest of this we can leave because we've just set all this up through our style manager. So we hit OK. And if I draw a dimension from here to here, you'll see that text is much more readable and we've gotten rid of the decimal point and the zeros and the millimeter call up. So uh, when you draw a dimension it keeps you in the command after you draw the dimension so we can dimension the left hand side. So click on the top right and then the bottom left drag out and click. So you can see that's our dimension there and now we'll draw some dimensions on the left hand side so we'll click there and there after that first bit of timber. Um, now if we go up to dimension and we select continuous we can actually click on this first dimension and it carries on the dimensions from that point so we can just keep clicking points further along the way and it, it pops them all out. So you can see this dimension here is uh, the, we want the text on the other side so to edit that we click on the edit tool over here and then click on our dimension and you'll see we get these little grips so we've got a grip here and a grip in the middle of the number so those let us move around the individual parts of this dimension so I'm going to move the text to the top 
I'm going to grab this grip and move it up so it lines up with these other dimensions here. Um, so that's the basics of dimensioning. I'll quickly dimension up one of these other views. We really only need to dimension two views to sort out the whole whole project. So I'm going to switch back into parallel. I'm just going to quickly dimension one of these. If I hover over that, I can get that extended snap so these all line up in this direction. And again, I'm going to go with the continuous dimension. I click on this dimension, and then I can click my points further down. Now you see I've clicked on the wrong point for that, so I'm going to hit Escape. Hit the Select tool and just delete that one. Um, even if you escape out of the command, you can still go through Dimensions, Continuous, pick that one, and then carry on picking your points, which is quite handy. Um, so I've got a couple of lines on top of each other, it doesn't really matter which one I pick there. Um, now these ones are all over the place, so I'm going to click on the Edit tool. These 90 dimensions, the text can really go between the arrows, so I'll just drag it back. I'll drag this one back into line. I'll drag this one up. Change the side for that one. Move that text inside. And with these dimensions, you can see it looks a bit funny there having the arrows go every which way. So I'm just going to drag this dimension down. And I'm going to have it line up with that dimension up the top there. So that should give us the main dimensions for our project. We shouldn't really need many more than that to set it out. Um, so for now, we'll switch over into models uh, into paper space, and I'll say, show you how to set up the printing. So to do that, we need to. I'll just click on the select tool to escape out of those commands. Um, if we go up to view, click on named views and then click on create view, we can drag a box around our whole project and I'm going to call this view our workbench. Hit OK. Now I'm going to switch over into paper space by clicking on the tab. So we set up our sheet right back at the beginning to be A3 through our page setup. So that's all set to A3. So now I'm going to create a viewport, which is pretty much a hole in our paper space looking through to model space. And I'll explain that a bit more clearly after I put it in. So I'll click on View, Viewports, Viewport. Now I'm going to drag a box. And we want it to look on our workbench view. So I click Go To and then Close. So you can see it's pulled through our, our line work from model space. So it sort of laid that um, to go back to the, the artwork reference. We've laid out our line work or our painting in the frame. Um, at the moment, this probably isn't to scale. So I'm going to click on my viewport, go up to modify properties. Now I want to click on viewport there. And you see where under scale it says it's 1 to 9.5. Now that's not really helpful to anyone. So I'm going to click fixed. And from the drop down box I'm going to click 1 to 10. Hit OK on that one. And that is now sitting on my page at 1 tenth the size of, um, of the actual objects. So. Um, the reason we set, when we changed our dimension styles, we set that number to 10 in model space is so that when this text comes through and it's scaled down, it's still readable. Because um, if we had that it set to 1, the text would actually come through at 1 tenth the size it is now. So at the moment that's all looking good. So I'm just going to click back on this viewport go back up to modify properties and I want to turn the box off so it doesn't print so I untick the visible box button and hit escape so you can see we've just got the line work on our sheet now so I'm just going to shift that up to the top left um, 
now if we want to we can go through and sort of spread these views out in our model space just so they fill the sheet up a bit better so if I select all that and click move it's going to drag that down a bit then I'm going to move this one over a little bit just so it looks a bit more balanced on the sheet um, and now we can just quickly add a schedule of parts so using the text tool here just going to drop in some text now you can see it's coming through quite large so I'm going to select all this text um, right click click on properties and I'm going to change this height to be let's say six points so you can see that's resized, the six is probably a bit too small so I'll right click properties I'll change it up to about 16 points for try so that's not a bad size for our heading so for this next part I'm actually going to switch to multi-line text drag a box so we'll say legs are 90 by 90 and there's four in total Hit enter to start a new line we'll say bench top is 240 by 45 and there's two in total now you can see that's forced to return there because I've got to drag out this little window so hit return and I'll go um, framing top and those are 45 by 90 and there's four of those around the top um, and then we've got framing bottom and again they're 45 by 90 and there's two of those down the bottom so I hit OK um, I'll just move this text so it lines up on the left here and then using the rectangle tool I'll just draw a line around it to make it sort of stand out so there you have it, that can now be printed through PDF um, or to an A3 printer um, I've downloaded the full zip PDF printer which is a free PDF printer um, so using the page setup I've got I can click OK just hit yes there and I should get a box ask me where I want to save that and after it saves it it should open it up so there you have it now if you look here you'll see that I've actually when I moved my objects around I've actually cut off part of my dimension here so to fix that up I can click on this and if I click on the edit tool click on that viewport again I can hold down shift and select these little boxes in the corners now once I've done that I can actually drag them down and it extends that viewport so you can see now I've got that dimension back so I just click escape to deselect that and there's your drawing and your plan all set out ready to go hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and found it instructive I should be working on some more tutorials um, in the not too distant future so stay tuned um, please feel free to leave a comment at www.craftycad.com um, this is as much a learning experience for me as it is for you so your feedback is more than appreciated um, yeah so stay tuned for some more tutorials thanks